We are now standing on Mount Surge, right above uh, UNESCO heritage of Dubrovnik. Behind us, you can see 359 acres of unspoiled nature, which are supposed to become a gated community, closed golf resort, where rich people should buy real estate and live. In 2010, we found out what is the scale of the project. It was equal to the scale of the entire city and 20 times bigger than the volume of the old city. Despite the facts that we already having over tourism, gentrification, uh, our infrastructure falling apart, the investor expects that the people finance the entire infrastructure for this project. So all this is being planned just for a handful of rich and powerful. They would chop down the existing forest, replace it with a golf turf, and to maintain it they would use crazy amounts of water and pesticide. The amount of water is three times bigger than the amount of water during the tourist season. So this is completely crazy and unacceptable for us. So I was born and raised in Dubrovnik and I was born and raised on these streets. And if you ever visit Dubrovnik, you will see why we always loved, loved Dubrovnik so much, why we are obsessed with it sometimes and why we really, really care about its uh, preservation and about its sustainable development. And that's why I joined in and uh, was more active in citizen initiatives. They are called Search is Ours and these are wonderful people who give everything. We did all sorts of things. We organized public debates about the issue. We had experts analyzing the documents. We had street actions. We even organized a referendum. We had 85% of people saying no to the project. But all the political levels in Croatia, from local to national, continued pushing the project. So we had to go to the court to show that this project was bad for the environment, bad for Dubrovnik, and illegal. We fought them in court for two and a half years, where we, at the end, won and had two judgments in our favor. Uh, killing the permits for the project. So Croatian courts stopped the real estate project, but unfortunately that was not the end of the story because the investor behind the project found a legal backdoor. It's called ISDS and it is found in many international trade and investment agreements. And under this ISDS regime and with the help of a letterbox company in the Netherlands, the investor is now suing Croatia, claiming $500 million in compensation. This is quite a lot of money that Croatian taxpayers might have to pay. As a teacher, I try to teach kids about values, about how to be active citizens and respect the laws. And I cannot understand how something like this can exist despite all our efforts, despite all our court decisions and wins, despite the referendum will of the citizens, now some three foreign arbiters will decide and we will not have a say about what's happening with our future. This is just one of nearly 1000 ISDS cases from around the world which we know of and in many cases corporations indeed use ISDS to bypass decisions by domestic courts and to undermine democratic processes, like in Dubrovnik, where people rejected a project that would have only been in the interest of a tiny elite. We are already seeing effects of this arbitration, because as soon as the arbitration claim was submitted, the state issued new permits for the investor, which were identical to the permits which were already annulled by the courts. As if this wasn't enough, the investor sued us in an attempt to silence our critique of this practice which we call racketeering, where they want an amount which is capable of shutting down our environmental organization. I think the arbitration process actually came because we were too powerful for them and they couldn't imagine any other way to destroy us. This has been a 14 year long struggle. Now with the arbitration, it's a bit more complicated. But in the end, what we want to say is that we will never give up because... So this is ours. ours.